my experience showing um, and exhibiting work has been has been great, honestly. I mean, it's just nice getting it out and seeing people's responses. I mean, even just the subtlest thing of, I mean, the painting I'm looking at now is me having I'm tilting my head. Like I love people standing in front of that painting also tilting their head, you know, like it's, it's lovely to see the human interaction um, and not just me alone tilting my head, which is what I always do. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it is kind of just a solitary existence, just being in here and painting, um, which is also how I, I like it. Um, but yeah, getting to hear people's responses is always nice. I mean, even if it's just having my studio open for, you know, first Friday things, like that's also just a nice part of it that I really do enjoy hearing people's responses. I love when people are coming in and they're just like, can I, can I tell you something? I'm like, yes. Like, and you know, like I just love hearing, you know, what people, other people see um, that I might not be seeing because it is, um, I mean, I guess even if it wasn't just me painting my face over and over again, you know, like I would like to hear what people see that I don't. Preparing uh, work for an exhibition, um, is as mundane as wiring things um, and possibly framing. Um, I do try to paint the edges of my paintings as opposed to framing. And I don't know, I feel like framing is such a separate thing. Like some people are just good at framing and that's, you know, a separate <laughs> skill and I don't like to put my own thoughts of what a frame would be on things. Um, knowing that there are so many different possibilities and I don't want that, that to limit or further, you know, inform how you're supposed to see the work. So, um, I feel like there's any number of ways that like sometimes I picture my paintings with like very ornate gold old fashioned frames, which I think would be fun because of like thinking about traditional portraits or oil paintings, like I like going that way, but because they are so modern, like I picture one or the other and I don't, I don't want to dictate that um, for the, for the viewer because I like being in that middle, in that middle ground. Um, but I also have to come up with titles, which is interesting. Um, sometimes I know what it's going to be from the beginning. Sometimes I title them and forget, and I'm glad that I wrote them down and had a show and could remember what they are. Um, I have a book over here that is the Women's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets that is ridiculous. Um, and I always, like if I find something in there that I like, I will Google it because it's, sometimes it's not even on Google and I'm like, I don't know who wrote this and like where they're finding this information, but that is like a fun separate thing sometimes of going on some sort of like research treasure hunt of like something that, that sparks um, some sort of recognition within myself. So, yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I mean, I've had any number of shows where I have to make the labels, I have to come up with, you know, make sure all my pricing is done. There's, you know, all of that paperwork, I guess you could say, that goes into it as well as um, hanging and all of uh, the more physical part. The desired outcome um, for a viewer experiencing my work is that they try to see themselves a little bit differently or think about the different sides to themselves um, that, you know, that's not what they're always putting out there. Um, I mean, a lot of this started, um, a lot of the paintings came out of me not feeling comfortable wearing very bright colors or like I always wanted to just kind of blend in um, and just not, I was just never comfortable, comfortable being the center of attention. So I started like making these bright paintings of myself in crazy wigs. And um, so that's been like how, that was a big part of me 
going into this. So, you know, if there's something about, you know, the viewer that they maybe aren't comfortable expressing or, you know, aren't fully realizing that about themselves. Um, I mean, my own journey with this, which has been, you know, four and a half years or so now, I am totally fine wearing bright colors and also not being the center of attention. Those aren't, um, doesn't need to be mutually exclusive. So I also would want the viewer to just try to see other people differently, um, just in terms of what maybe you see on the surface is not at all what it is. You know, like there's so many ways to think about yourself and other people in terms of what is presented either um, in real life or um, social media that I would hope that they would walk away, um, you know, best case scenario thinking about both of those things, but that it's more that that's the dialogue that I want to start. I came up with the idea for this show years ago. Um, could not pinpoint exactly when that was, but um, there is one piece in the show that I've had for over two years now that I commissioned. So it's this has been something that's been brewing for a while. And I just always wanted people to come and view my work uh, in a way that was self-reflective, that they would you know, the viewer would think about themselves differently, if possible, or and also think about like dressing a different way and what that, how that manifests itself into feeling a different way. So I thought a way to be able to show the different sides of this would be to ask different artists um, across all different media to interpret one of my paintings. And I also gave them the source photo that I used. And then I also gave myself the same task um, and that work is behind me um, to see if I could come up with a different way, a different way of seeing that original photo and piece. I use a lot of different wigs and uh, props, different uh, parts of my wardrobe that has gotten a we'll say a little out of control at this point, um, but you know, there's there's different things that go into getting dressed for the day or getting dressed for a specific event that I wanted to kind of play on. And when I started, I didn't the first batch of paintings that I did of self portraits weren't. I think there were there were a couple wigs maybe, but the piece that this exhibition is based around was one of those, um, and I had the pink wig on in that, and that was one reason why I really wanted a lot of this exhibition and my work to spring from that one painting, because I felt like that really hit home. Something about that rang true. So the wigs also kind of have their own life at this point because um, I do really feel something with all of the bright colors so it's it's an ever-changing process it started out you know using these things to explore different parts of myself and now the paintings have kind of grown into their own version of me or <laughs> the persona that I'm um, trying to communicate I think the, the different interpretations that you see here, um, I don't think that they necessarily reflect a different side of you know what my vision was. I, I think it's really remarkable how they reflect the artists themselves. You know, like I definitely gave them the materials to work with, but I mean the the nature of painting self-portraits and being so introspective about them, you know when you give them to someone else, you know, you think that they're going to still be working with what I put out there. Um, but, you know, just sitting here looking around, it's, it's remarkable how much they really reflect each individual artist as opposed to my hand in it. You know, like I, I know some of these, even the representational ones, you know, might look like me or have something, you know, like some aspect um, of the painting itself in it, but 
I think that's one thing that was really surprising was how even though I went into it picking people with different styles and different um, backgrounds that they really brought something to the table that I could not have seen. I handpicked um, all of these people. There was one person who may have volunteered <laughs> when I was talking about it who was very excited to take part and I mean I had quite a few lists running of potential people. Um, I cold called a couple of people, just sent them messages and didn't hear back and then kind of redirected to people I knew or at least had shared connections with. For the most part, I mean it it kind of happened over time. This was actually a show that was supposed to happen in April of 2020 and got canceled uh, because of the pandemic. So I kind of had a base going. It was going to be a much smaller exhibit, but I had something to work from there. So that was kind of nice to be able to, you know, I that was a pretty local group of people. Um, and then I was able to branch out. So that was helpful in picking people um, to know that I had a good group going in and then it was just going to get better from there. I wasn't overly surprised by what people did. I mean some of these artists work with a variety of medium themselves so sometimes it wasn't quite what I pictured um, but it still was within the realm of possibility. So I think what was more surprising was just kind of the way that some of these communicate with each other. You know, like I just went into it seeing each individual and what they could possibly do. Um, but it was, it was quite a moment of when this like, lo when the placement locked into place um, <laughs> that, um, you know, getting to see just which colors jumped out, like, you know, there's not a lot of yellow in my piece, but a bunch of people went with that color. You know, like there's just like little things that I don't know what it was. Um, you know, pink is an obvious choice and a lot of people did gravitate to that, which makes sense. But you know, the other things, um, and I love the texture of hair that's in a couple pieces, like um, the piece by, um, by Sean Pinkney, he was saying he was going to do feathers originally and then switch to hair, which he had never worked with, you know, like, and even just knowing those choices, like, that the individual artist went through is, is neat that it finally clicked into place separately, you know, in everybody's individual studios or homes or wherever they were working. Um,